<laughs> r slash rules horror posted by you slash sage underscore and underscore sterling the night staff our school was different at night all we wanted to do was pull a senior prank throw some toilet paper around the halls draw penises on the bathroom mirrors those sorts of things it was going to be fun staying at the school overnight without anyone knowing and trashing the place that had brought us so much misery for four years but none of us had ever stayed in the building past 3 p.m. before, so there was no way for us to know what happened in our school at night. Instead of breaking into the school at night and risking getting arrested, we decided to hide in the gym closet after 7th period and stay there until everyone had left and locked up. Since no one expects kids to be willingly stowing away to spend a whole night at their high school, no one thought to check the closet, and it worked. Walking through the halls of our school at night was beyond weird. The hallways were dark thanks to the lack of windows, a feature that often led kids to joke about the place feeling like a prison. There were only 15 of us, and we were all in the same class, so we decided to start in our homeroom since we all really hated our homeroom teacher. So that's where it began. We were all in that biology classroom, writing stupid messages on the whiteboard and arranging the skeleton figures to look like they were having sex. It was mostly quiet as we worked, save for a few giggles and cheers here and there. But then there was a loud crackling sound from behind me that made me jump and spin around. It came from the intercom. Shit, is there someone here? I whispered. No one answered, listening closely. Then a woman's voice came through. Hello, esteemed visitors. She spoke in a cheery tone and with a British accent. But there was something off about her voice, it could have just been the intercom distorting her words, but for some reason, it sent a chill down my spine. It has been quite a while since we've had students stay the night, the woman continued. Welcome, I hope you are ready for your night lessons. We stood frozen in the classroom, sharing confused glances. I didn't recognize the woman's voice, and clearly neither did anyone else. I am Maureen Blakely, the night principal. And I am here to guide you through the night, I could hear the smile in her voice. Guys, let's get out of here, one of my friends said, backing up towards the door. It's probably some other seniors pulling a prank they'll rat us out. He turned and opened the door, but it was yanked back out of his grasp by an invisible force and it slammed shut. One of my other friends screamed. Tut, tut, Maureen said slowly. You cannot leave the room before you've heard the rules. What the fuck? I heard someone say. Now, I'm going to read these out to you once, and then you can find a copy of them in the front desk of the room you sit in. Be sure to listen closely and follow them all to a T. Shaking my head, I scoffed, this is stupid. I crossed the room to the one small window at the back, my reflection looking back at me as I approached. It was pitch black outside. I started to pull at the lock on the side, intending to open it and climb out. But then, I was thrown backwards onto my back. All of the air left my lungs as I hit the floor, and I coughed. My friends called out my name. Before I could move or catch my breath, I was pulled to my feet and shoved into the desk next to me. It felt like someone was grabbing me and pushing me around, but there was no one there. My friends cursed and screamed as they were all forced into desks in a similar fashion. I was suddenly completely paralyzed, only able to look straight ahead and barely able to breathe. We have quite an ambitious group here, don't we? Maureen laughed. No need to worry, I simply ask that you all remain quiet and attentive. These rules will be crucial for you to know. It is currently 10.50 pm, which means that in exactly 10 minutes you will need to begin following the rules. You must then continue to do so until 7 am tomorrow. My friends and I remained silent and unable to move as the woman read the rules over the intercom, her voice remaining chillingly happy throughout. Rule number one is more of a warning. Know that you will not be alone in the school tonight, rather you will be under the supervision of the night staff. They are much more strict than the teachers you know, and they look very, different. Do your best to stay on their good sides. You can do so by, once again, following the rules. Rule number two, beware of the one that hunts you. He will not stop until the sun rises, or until he has found you all. Because of this, do not stay in any room or hallway for longer than 13 minutes. So, unfortunately, sleep is not an option. It is also best to travel alone to avoid catching his attention. Rule number 3, if you find yourself in the hallway that leads to the music room, you will notice that the lights are off. Do not turn them on. If there is loud music coming from the music room, you are free to travel down the hall. If the music stops, stand as still as you can and hold your breath. The night music teacher will hear the smallest sounds you make, so stay silent. Once the music turns on again, 
you can move as you wish as she will not be able to hear you. Rule number 4, I advise avoiding any mirrors. Seeing how you appear in our world may be startling. Rule number 5, as much as you may want to, do not leave the building. If you open an exit door, you will find yourself looking down the hallway you stand in, watching yourself open the door from behind. Once you have entered the loop, you cannot escape. Rule number 6, for those of you who use the male restrooms, please refrain from using the urinals at any time in the night. The night cleaners have particularly sharp claws and have been known to use them. If you wish to leave with all of the bits you entered with, please use the toilets. Rule number 7, if you are craving a midnight snack, you are welcome to head to the cafeteria. You will smell the night lunch lady before you see her, and the stench may deter your hunger. But if it does not, brace yourself before you enter the cafeteria. Once you are inside, the whispers will begin, along with the squelching sounds of the night lunch lady's exposed organs. Do not stare, and don't do anything the whispers tell you to do. The night lunch lady will be waiting for you with two choices, a plate of fruit or a slice of meatloaf. Take the fruit. Do not eat the meatloaf. If you would like to know where the meat comes from, see rule number 6. Rule number 8, at 1 am, there will be a lockdown protocol. You will hear my voice announcing such over the intercom. Head to the closest classroom in an orderly fashion and lock the door behind you. Turn the lights out and hide in a corner as you would in any normal lockdown. You will then hear violent banging on a door, as well as persistent begging and threats. You may hear the voice of a fellow student pleading to be let in, do not fall for this. It may be a trick. Do not open the door until 1.11 am, even if the sounds stop before then. Rule number 9, from 2.34 am to 2.58 am, the teacher hunting you will become frustrated. At this time, the only room in the building that is safe will be the first floor janitor's closet. It is a tight space, so only a few of you will fit inside. You must decide amongst yourselves who that is. I suggest the least athletic student hide in the closet. Those of you who excel in running, particularly, have a better chance of escaping him. Rule number 10. If you decide to enter the gymnasium at any time, you will meet the night gym teacher. If you do not see him at first, look up. He tends to crawl on the ceilings and is always smiling. He cannot speak due to the length of his teeth, so you will not need to say anything. Just make sure to always remain smiling when in his presence. Rule number 11, the final rule, in the final hour, I will be the only staff member still present in the school. All of the lights will go out and I will begin to look for each of you. Something, happens to me in this hour. I can never remember anything aside from waking up with splinters of bone stuck in my teeth and blood dripping from my chin. I've been told that you can hear me approaching, though. The snapping of my bones as I move will be enough to warn you that I am near. If you hear me, close your eyes. You will feel my breath on your skin and hear my joints popping as I examine you, but so long as you keep your eyes closed until I am gone, you will be fine. And that would be all. Good luck, students. The intercom clicked silent and I could move again. No one in the class made a sound as we watched the clock strike 11.